Um, Diana Fairbanks is a painter and printmaker among many other talents. She also is the gallerist for Oli Pop-Up Gallery, which is run in her teaching studio where she holds classes and an apprentice program. Uh, and again, among many other things, y'all have been lucky to um, participate in the fruits of her labor on the various commissions and boards that she um, participates in. I like to think so. Um, yeah, uh, this is my studio, Oli Images Studio. When I had a practice in Seattle, I called it Alki Images. When I moved here in 08, um, the studio that I'm now in was a three car garage that was used to install audio equipment in cars. And it had alarm systems all over it because apparently people steal audio equipment from cars. And uh, so I spent a year um, getting light into this building as apparently you don't need that to install audio equipment in cars and tearing out alarms and they were everywhere. And um, the last one that I found was kind of a howl moment because the battery was dying and it was screaming in lower and lower tones. And it turned out it was in the attic in the house. Um, it, so um, getting to a more normal, less um, alarmed place took about a year. And um, something, some funny things happened on the way. Um, I got skylights and a north window in the studio and I took out uh, some garage doors and I put in um, uh, ADA access because to me, I, I it was kind of my dream studio, but uh, also my dream classroom. So, and I didn't want, I did not want uh, any barriers to getting in here. So um, that was all done on purpose and it took a while. And, um, and then when I got it done, I sort of envisioned um, a life of painting in here. I didn't, I, I never actually owned a maker's place in all of my years of making art. But, but now I had a studio. And I can't remember, I invited some people over, some new friends that were artists, and they looked at the place and they said, can I get some time in here? Never even thought of that. Didn't cross my mind that other people would love to have access to such a space too. And um, it turns out that the real benefit of all of this has been community. And uh, one of the first things that happened while we were still making the place habitable for art making was that my neighbor had a child at, um, oh, what's the name of that school? They had to do an internship there. And uh, she was an eighth grader who, who wanted to intern with an artist. And it turned out one had just moved in next door. So she spent a year with me and uh, she couldn't pay for the lessons, and I'm kind of expensive. So um, she did know how to um, um, trim out wallboard that hadn't been treated and prime it. So she'd come in and work for an hour on the walls, and then we'd have a lesson for an hour. And she paid for a whole year of lessons all by herself that way. And that was my first intern, and she is now a um, ER nurse practitioner in, uh, in Wenatchee, and I'm so proud of her, I could just pop. Anyway, that started another thing that I did not foresee, which is internships. Um, so things sort of evolved around here. And um, now the studio is, was <laughs> full of activities, classes in here, private lessons, my own work, um, uh, printmaking class that I taught uh, episodically. Uh, and um, uh, once a year, I invited 50 third graders into this place um, to see how an artist lives and works. And I've had interns ever since the first one. So um, this is, uh, yeah. So if you just look at it now, Let's see if I can turn this around. 
So um, it's set up now as a Pentagon, so I can have four students and one teacher in here. And normally a class could accommodate eight students with all of their paraphernalia, but uh, right now we've cut that down. And uh, it, there's a very real possibility that Cal Capener will come back with his classes. And they'll have to be smaller and, and over two days instead of one. But um, I think we can do that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're slowly coming back. Um, but uh, the good news is that uh, I was actually um, building a prudent reserve in the last year or so while I ran the studio and while it was quite busy. And so in terms of um, uh, the expenses that might come up, because it actually costs money to unlock the door, if you can imagine that, um, that's all been paid for and I don't have to worry about it for a while. So, um, yeah, so I can actually do my work here. And the funny thing is uh, I've sort of forgot how to use this space for my own stuff. So I had to really clean it up to do this. <laughs> Um, but um, nevertheless, this is kind of my yacht and my business, as it turns out, has a lot to do with this studio. Um, so I want to show you some of the kinds of work that I do, which is that uh, I started a series in Seattle. I was kind of inadvertent. I lived not very far from the Duwamish waterway, and I started doing paintings of it. And then when I moved to Olympia, I started doing paintings of the um, Deschutes and uh, uh, Nisqually because that's what was here. And the reason I did those is that I wrote a book many years ago called Backroads of Washington. We went all over the state and um, looked at all kinds of stuff. And uh, among other things that we shot pictures of and wrote descriptions of were rivers in Washington. And of course, you can't get everything in a book. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can't get in a book because it's just only so many pages. So I had uh, access to photographs and information about rivers that we couldn't use, and I thought they were just gorgeous. And um, so once I got here and I uh, looked at this collection of um, rivers that I had, I thought it'd be fun to do more. And the, the joke is that I should have uh, counted them up first because there are 148 rivers in Washington and uh, 24 main drainages in Washington. And uh, the thing about human interaction, there we go, look at this, look at that. Where'd you get that? <laughs> um, the human interaction with rivers is um, amazing. There are all kinds of things going on there. And I decided that all of the pictures of rivers would have some indication of human interaction. So you see bridges and dams. Sometimes you see people um, um, oh, just fishing or swimming in the rivers. And uh, sometimes you see structures that were built on the rivers. This is, uh, there are some images that I call ghost images because, um, there are parts, there are things on the river that don't exist anymore. Like I have a lovely painting of the Elwha Dam that you can see in the second row here. And obviously that's not there anymore. And next to it is the, um, this is the Duwamish River Bridge that was taken down and replaced. And some of the structures are, um, yeah, this Elwha Dam used to be there. Um, some of the structures like the wooden ones, the fishing weirs in the Chinook River, um, they don't last forever by design. So, um, so uh, some things are very distant and small and far away and some are close up and uh, uh, kind of in your face. There's a lovely picture of the Chehalis that has a, a pylon in it that was part of a railroad bridge and it looks kind of like a Greek um, remains because um, the river, the bridge is long gone. Um, and I don't know if you saw Shane Anderson's wonderful film on, on the Chehalis the other night, but um, he talks about the history of the river and how it was cleared out and then allowed to silt in and that it's, you know, still it floods some, some valuable land where a lot of people live. Um, and, um, and so this painting has a remains of how it kind of got to that place. And, um, 
Um, and, and this is what interests me at this point. So rivers, but then there are some other threads and those of you who know me know that if I'm doing prints, they're usually pictures of shoes. And I have a lot of pictures of shoes, different prints of shoes. And uh, in fact, I've been working on some in the, uh, in the interim um, in the studio and I can get those right now. So these are great big linoleum blocks of shoes. Here's another one. <laughs> and, and I have some even bigger ones that are carved but not printed yet. So this one says, put on your dancing shoes. Wow. And this one is my cowgirl boots. It says boots on the ground. So these are big ones. I'm working on another one with hiking boots. And I have a lovely press to print them on. You can see it over here. This is not my press but it lives here it's a uh, 18 by 36 sturgis and uh then i have a little tiny press but these are, blocks are too big for that and um then uh, another thing that i do are um what i call pastry monuments and uh, I have a, an agreement with uh, Left Bank Pastry that we will do a series of cards of their pastry um, as pastry monuments and sell them as a fundraiser. So I, now that they're open again, I'm delighted to see that. Um, I'm going to have to uh, finish that series. <laughs> so um, so uh, the funny thing is that when I talked to them about it, they had seen some earlier pastry monument paintings because I've done a number of them and um and they accept that the the most recent ones were of pastries from Wagner's instead of left bank so so uh I, I had to start over um the other thing I've done during the pandemic is um distance learning teaching and this is hilarious because I haven't done this since um since I was uh, in graduate school. And um, so uh, I had third grade art students and they got sent home summarily uh, in March without even getting to clean the stuff out of their desk like their markers and uh, colored pencils and scissors. They didn't have anything when they went home except a Chromebook. And we had just loaded a really terrible art program on there called Paint Z. So, um, so they left and then we started sending them lessons. And this is, this is what we did. Um, so over here, all of this stuff here, but particularly this, this series that starts right here and goes up the wall and around the corner, that's all art lessons. And then the other stuff is things I've done besides that during the pandemic. So you see some really weird stuff like they, we didn't know what they had for um, materials. So this is all stuff that you can make out of the recycle bin and, and some little sculptures that you can do that way too. And this is a sculpture park. I made a sculpture park out of recycle bin. Yeah. So what's, what's so funny about this is that in graduate school, we had terrible technology. Uh, honestly, as bad as we're having fun today, we would have killed for that uh, back in uh, 1985. Um, but nevertheless, we're done for the year and we're thinking about next year and nobody has any idea how this is gonna work next year. So, uh, and, and 
another funny thing is that um, I have materials for 50 art students stored in my studio <laughs> and, and no kids. I can't, uh, I asked, you know, if I could send this stuff out to them or anything and they said, nope, can't do that. So it's still here. <laughs> I'm ready for next year, I guess. Anyway, um, that's kind of what's been occupying me uh, during this time. Uh, uh, I'm not as motivated and uh, enthralled about painting as I thought I would be, but um, turns out I respond to promises I make to other people better than anything else. So that's kind of where I am. <laughs> and uh, any questions? Yeah, any questions or comments for Diana? Do you have an example of a pastry monument, Diana? Because I'm having a hard time visualizing it. Or, well, or maybe I'm... Let me see if I can find one. Hold straight. on. <laughs> I was happy to hear Diana say she wasn't motivated. I'm not the only one then. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> Short answer is no. <laughs> um, they're uh, landscapes with a uh, great big pastry in them. So um, uh, I usually give them away or sell them or otherwise um, uh, dispose of them as charity paintings. So um, um, one was called Capital Lake Cupcake, and it has a huge cupcake in Capital Lake. Um, one is called the Priest Point Pinwheel, and I've done some postcards of that, uh, and I'm now doing a bigger painting of it. Um, I can show you some of the um, preliminary work for those because they're mostly done with Photoshop. Yes, Lois, you're definitely not the only one. We talked about this in the Maybe in Terry's, but I feel like everyone's responding kind of differently. And yep, yeah, we are. Yeah. So this is an example of the um, <laughs> of the mock-up for the Priest Point pinwheel, and uh, this is from Left Bank. Wow, so, actually one of theirs. And uh, they're all oversized pastries. Um, I have a, a mock-up for uh, something called uh, Mud Bay Macarons and another one called um, Swan Town Swan Puffs. Uh, <laughs> Left Bank makes those wonderful swan puffs. So, um, so I'm, I'm kind of working my way. They're all alliterations and they're all kind of goofy as heck. So, um, so they're sort of fun, but... Uh, the good news is that Left Bank spots me the pastry, so I'm kind of. I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm kind of uh, motivated <laughs> to, because uh, oh, everything there is good. I've, I've, you know, tested many of their products, and I'm yeah, they're all good. So um, <laughs> so I want to get it done, um, and then we need to make an understanding so, about who the funds go to, but they have outlets to sell this kind of stuff and they have a loyal following and uh, they were very interested in doing it. So, so now I'm kind of on the hook to get it done. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, how, uh, are you done with the River Series? And if not, how many left to go? <laughs> oh yeah, I have done about 70 of 148 rivers. Uh, about I have done. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And uh, some of the, uh, I don't know if you've actually been to see any rivers recently, but um, several things have happened. Um, the places where fishermen would go to a river um, are kind of remote. And lots of times they are not accessible in a Prius, which is what I have, because uh, river roads are very ruddy and uh, and they get you to a river and that's about all you can say about them. Also, whether you've thought about it or not, because we see all of the homeless people that are in urban settings, but there are a lot of homeless people living out by rivers somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
And so when you go there, you, you don't know what you'll find. So I like to, um, I like to either plan this so that I'm only there briefly, long enough to take a picture and get out of there. Or, um, or the best thing for me has been collaboration with photographers who can get the kind of image I want out of a river. And unfortunately, I've kind of run out of photographers. I'm, I'm looking for another one. Uh, one of them moved to Florida and the other one died. So kind of having to get this going again. But I would like to finish them in my lifetime. I would like to will them to the States so that my daughter doesn't have to deal with them. Um, and um, I have a ways to go. I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, that was one of my projects for this summer. But I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I hope that answers about the pastries in the rivers. Lou McMillan, he used to work for Artswa. Uh, oh. He's retired. He's a photographer. I'm going to put his, I'm going to find a link and I'm going to put it in the notes here as a new photographer for you, Diana, because he specializes in nature landscape. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking, a lot of photographers like to shoot uh, pictures of rivers as if people were never there, but I need, I specifically need some evidence of human interaction. Could be real subtle. In some cases it is. Also, if you want to see some of these pictures, there's a drive-through gallery. If you go uh, behind City Hall, where Gravity Yoga is, there's an L-shaped parking lot you can drive through, and there's a building there with a lot of windows. Um, a few, um, and you can drive through there, and you can see one of the big paintings. There's a, the biggest painting I've done so far, which is the Green River, is there, and a bunch of smaller ones. So it's a drive through gallery. You can go and see some of those paintings. Yeah, right. we haven't publicized it very much, but that's, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff there. Yeah. So um, uh, that's another thing that kind of happened. Some of the paintings got big and the, the one at, uh, in that gallery is six by eight and it, it's too big for a panel truck. So I think that's the last one of that size that doesn't come in segments that I'm gonna do because moving it has been a real beast. Um, I have done murals, so obviously I could work bigger if I had to, but um, um, yeah, that's about the biggest thing on canvas I'm gonna do, yeah. So yeah, that's my story, I'm sticking to it. Great, thank you so much, Diana. Yes. Any <laughs> questions or comments before we get to wrapping up? I have a little bit of info for anyone who's planning to come Thursday. It's a little different than usual. Um, so let's go ahead and say thank you, Diana, and give her a round of applause. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you.